Welcome to Creatively Christian, a podcast by Theophany Media, where we inspire, inform, educate, and empower creative Christians of all types. I'm one of your hosts, Brandon Hollingsworth. On this episode, Brandon Hollingsworth talks with comic artist Jamie Costley about how he turned his art into a full-time career. All right. Hello, everyone. This is Brandon Hollingsworth from Theophany Media's Creatively Christian Podcast, and I am super stoked to have Jamie Costley on the podcast this afternoon. It is uh, getting close to Christmas. You'll be watching this after Christmas, but we're recording this before Christmas. So Merry Christmas to you, Jamie. How are you? Thank you. Merry Christmas to you. I'm, I'm good. I'm doing good. Awesome. Awesome. So for those that don't know him, uh, Jamie, um, he is um, an artist, a cartoonist. Uh, he also does graphic design and, uh, and books for children as well. He's got a reoccurring comic in Star Wars Insider Magazine called The Light Side. I'm such a big fan of a huge <laughs> geek. <laughs> it's like one of those properties. We'll talk about more of that in just a bit. Um, he's been with them since May of 2017, issue 172. So um, um, and obviously it's, uh, it's December, 2020 now. So been with him for several years. He's also got a reoccurring comic in WDW magazine, which is related to Disney parks. So another huge franchise that you're related to and involved with just stunning and amazing. He's had work in highlights, uh, children's magazine, mm-hmm. and he's illustrated over 40 kids picture books. And he's got a passion project that I can't wait to get into, but we're going to save that for the end. So <laughs> I'm looking forward to that one. So tell us, uh, Jamie, a little bit about your story. You and I have talked briefly before on another project, and you've got an interesting story. So as you will, give us a little background of how you got to where you are today. Sure, sure. Um, well, the, well the, uh, the short answer is um, uh, the Lord has has blessed, uh, has blessed me. Um, and, uh, I, I have always wanted to be, um, a full-time cartoonist. Uh, that has always been my dream. Um, but the Lord had other, had other dreams as well. And, uh, I had, I had to learn some hard lessons, <laughs> but, um, you know, but, but looking back, I can see where he, he was, he has always been, uh, been directing my path. Um, uh, my daughter, Ava is, um, is 12 years old. And, uh, right after she was born, um, I lost a really, really good job that I had in sales. Um, at the time I was making more money than I had ever made in my life. Um, and we were, we were doing, we, we were doing really well. Um, and so to say that my world had been completely rocked is, is quite an understatement. Um, you know, here we are with a, with a newborn and <laughs> I, you know, I didn't, I didn't really know what to do. And, um, so I, I told my wife, Christy, I wanted to, you know, to try to do, you know, full-time art. And of course that scared her to death. <laughs> <laughs> great, great answer, Dad. <laughs> um, and um, you know, I, I ended up. We we looked at uh, what it would cost, you know, for daycare and to kind of get back into, um, you know, a full time full time gig. I, you know, I was trying to get back into sales. Uh, I wasn't necessarily bad at sales, but it, I wasn't passionate about what I was selling you right. know it was just kind of like it was a uh, means to an end I guess mm-hmm. and um, so I started picking up uh, little projects um, you know it might be a, a, a comic book issue or a picture book and um, and then I started picking up you know a few more things and I remember the first year it was like Oh gosh, I haven't, I didn't make anything. <laughs> and my, I can't my, even buy Taco Bell. <laughs> my poor kids, uh, you know, they, you know, looking back, they didn't realize how, sure. um, how we were struggling, but I'd be like, let's go to the library and rent some movies, <laughs> you know? And, uh, 
I'm like, okay, cool. So, you know, um, we, we still had, we still had an awesome time. Um, but I would, you know, start to, to meet different people and all, all the while I kind of felt like, you know, the Lord was, was calling me to do, um, you know, full-time ministry, uh, which was, uh, leading worship. And that, that terrified us too. Um, because, you know, there's, there's a, there's a whole nother level. I guess they always say new levels, new devils. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, Oh boy. Uh, but, uh, I sang and play guitar. And so, um, there was one church that, um, they called me and asked me to come and, and help them out for two weeks. Cause their, their entire worship band left. It was a, it was a very strange situation. Um, you know, and I didn't want to get into it because I, I didn't know anybody there. Sure. And I said, all right, I'll come out for two weeks. And two weeks turned into uh, 10 years wow. um, that they brought me on. And so I was able to do, uh, you know, part-time worship leading and then part-time uh, artwork. Mm-hmm. And at the time, you know, the worship it was here and the art was way down here. And then over time, it slowly started to, it slowly started to change. And, um, you know, I'll never forget. I was, I was heading home one night and I called my brother, Steven, you know, and I mm-hmm. said, Steven, I think I'm, I think I'm going to throw the towel in, um, and give up on this dream. And he was really upset. He was like, no, what are you talking about? Cause I had had, a, I had had a friend that, um, you know, I'm not, not going to name names or get into it, but took something sure. that I wrote and they took full credit for it. You know, I was so excited. My son was like six at the time. So the book comes out, there's no mention of me. And, you know, it was my idea. It was my story. And I was like, I think maybe this is it for me. And so Steven, he was like, no, he called, he called our mom and, she called me and talked with me and prayed with me. And, um, you know, you just, you just have those, those moments where it's like, man, I just can't get any lower mm-hmm. <laughs> than mm-hmm. right now. I hear you. <laughs> um, but, but then, you know, the Lord, the Lord starts to, starts to open doors for you. And it's cool because all you can do is, is, is give him credit. Mm-hmm. Um, make sure that, that all the glory goes to him. And that's, that's, what's exciting to me. I mean, yes, yes, I work hard. I work mm-hmm. really, really hard. I, I have um, tried to develop a style that's, that's unique to me. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, I know, I know why I'm where I am. Yeah, absolutely. Pray, praise the Lord. Absolutely. Um, and, and we can kind of, you know, I normally try and keep it on track, but uh, I think this is a good t- uh, time to talk a little bit about our empower section. So on creatively Christian, so our, our audience is Christians and hopefully, um, you know, hopefully we've got some folks who don't know Christ listening as well, but, but we're specifically talking to people who are Christian, who are creative or want to be creative. And so I think your story has the opportunity to really, um, we have the opportunity to underscore something here and I'd like to, to kind of jump off format and do that if we could. Mm-hmm. So pretend you're talking to a Christian creative. You're talking to Jamie X number of years ago when you're, you know, you've got that new baby and you're thinking and feeling led like I need to do art. You had to have relied on something, you know, there was a scripture or some, you know, something that you had gotten from the word or from, you know, walk us through that and, and help uh, let's help empower some of those Christian creatives. Cause I know there's, there's always those Christian creatives that are on that precipice, mm-hmm. right there. Should I take the plunge or should I stay, you know, in this kind of safe zone? So if you can speak some, speak some words into that, Jamie, and, and, you know, you don't have to quote scripture if you don't want to or whatever, but, but just speak to that. And what helped you get through that time that was probably super scary. Yeah, it it, de- it definitely well, definitely was. Um, my my grandfather Jack Simmons was a uh, a preacher, and um, um, a fan. I mean, I'm biased, but fantastic <laughs> preacher. <laughs> uh, he he was very uh, very quiet man, but when he was in the pulpit, I used to tease because if if his jacket came off, I was like, uh oh, you <laughs> know. 
<laughs> even as a kid, I was like, here it comes. Um, but there were, there was always one that, um, that he always quoted from Ecclesiastes. Um, I, th- I think it's, and please forgive me, we might have to go back and check. I think it's yeah, don't worry about 11, one, but it's cast thy bread upon the waters and after many days it shall, you know, return to you. Um, and so I'm thinking about, all right, I, I have spent many, many years um, trying to, to break in to, to this industry. Um, mm-hmm. The Lord knows my heart. I've, I've laid it, I've laid it down so many times. Um, and, and strangely enough, you know, at the time I'm like, what in the world are you doing? Mm-hmm. Cause um, I've, I definitely felt the calling to lead worship, but it was really difficult to be in front of people. Um, you, you know, you know, like as an artist, you get to be alone and, and you get right. to, be, you know, you close the door and it's just you and you're drawing or you're creating or you're writing Mm-hmm. But when you're in front of people, it's like and suddenly your flaws are magnified and you start saying, OK, well, I, should I really should I be the one doing this? Right. And, um, you know, there have been a lot of wonderful people along the way that have encouraged me. And they're like, you know, keep keep that focus on the Lord. Um, give him all the glory. Mm-hmm ask him what, what, what are his dreams for you? Right. Right. And I'm like, Oh man, I, I don't know if I want to ask him. That. <laughs> exactly. I don't know if I want the answer. I might what ask, he, but I don't know if I want the answer. What if it's just not lining up, you know? <laughs> um, so I was, <laughs> I was really, really nervous, but it, it was obvious that, um, cause I think one of the last, one of the last times I flew out to, somewhere out in the Midwest. I mean, it was a whirlwind mm-hmm. and um, I was going to get back in sales. I was going to get back in back on track. And, you know, it, it looked like a pretty decent package. And um, I felt like I had impressed, you know, the people when I got back and they, they said, we're not going to offer it to you. And I was just like, I was shocked. Right. And I can right. remember, um, you know, Christy was, she was so upset and I was upset. And I, I said, you know, I would never, intentionally do anything to make you cry but i feel like i keep messing up Mm -hmm. and so we both you know kind of prayed about it and said well let's you know go to cornerstone and 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 lead worship and and let's see what happens and Mm -hmm. uh you know that was that was a a huge period of of growth for me because there were people there that just poured into my life Mm -hmm. just spoke truth um Another scripture that I really, really love is, uh, and I always, I always say, I, I think this is right. <laughs> uh, Proverbs 38 and nine, uh, basically saying, don't give me riches to the point where I don't even rely on you anymore. Right. But don't make me poor either. So that I, <laughs> keep I me do in the, something. Keep me in the middle, Lord. <laughs> exactly. I was like, keep, keep me in the middle, please. But and, what you're um, saying, Jamie, is spot on, you know, and I think it's such a, such a, a word of truth that that Christian creatives need to hear that sometimes they don't because you, you, you rarely hear stuff like this from the pulpit. But but faith begets faith. You know, I mean, when we begin to step out on faith, just like you did. Right. Like, okay, I'm going to take this step. Well, and, and God puts something right under your foot, just at the right place, the right time. And you're stable. You're only stable for a moment because you got to take another step. And the next step's out into darkness or out into mist. You know, you don't know what's coming next. But what happens is, is as we step out continually on faith over and over again, and we see God show up time and time again, it gets easier to take that next step, right? And we mm-hmm. see God manifest in all these amazing ways, like you're talking about, like people calling me on the phone out of the blue saying, hey, I'm praying for you. Or people at church laying hands on you and says, God's, God's got a word for you. Or, you know, hey, here's 50 bucks. God told me to give you this money. I don't know right. why, but here it is, you know. And you're like, I needed 50 bucks to pay the power bill. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and, but Christian creatives need to hear that because that first step, that first step of faith is always the hardest one. And it gets slowly and steady, steadily easier. But you're right. It never gets so easy where we can say, I did this. 
right? Not right. if not if we're truthful, because in our weakness, he's made strong, right? We have right. to glorify him. So that is, that's spot on, brother. I mean, that is spot on. <laughs> we can end the podcast right now and be done. I mean, that's awesome. That's great. Well, tell us a little bit, if you would, Jamie, about, I mean, you're working with some of the most well-known properties on the globe, on the planet <laughs> Earth. I mean, you're working with Star Wars and Disney, um, and but there's got to be a place you go for inspiration, right? So, so where does Jamie go when he's when he's got a comic with Ben Solo and he doesn't know what to do, right? <laughs> where where do you go for inspiration? Well, I there there are just so many um, uh, creative people that that I love and admire. Um, you know, and, and of course, the cool thing is I get to share that with, you know, with my son and, and my daughter. Um, but as, as far as the, the aesthetic of the light side, what is so neat is that, um, you know, growing up, I always wanted to be a newspaper cartoonist. Oh. I, I loved Peanuts. I loved um, Garfield. I loved um, the far side. And, and so it's, it's like the Lord allowed me to be a part of this this amazing property and at the same time you pay homage to um you know beetle bailey and mort walker and you know i wanted to i wanted mm -hmm. to do that and so it's it's really cool um that he has allowed that to happen because i i've you know i've shared this before but i sent um i sent an email to uh jonathan wilkins who was the the editor at the time and uh, i I introduced myself and I said, um, I, I don't know if you would ever have a need for someone who does spot illustrations, but, or um, if, if your magazine, I noticed you didn't have a comic strip, maybe you'd like a comic strip and I could, I could submit some. Well, to my surprise, he responded and he said, um, what kind of comic strip? Show me what you got. Mm -hmm. Well, at the time, I didn't have anything because um, <laughs> I didn't expect him to respond. <laughs> so I took the next day I was I was in the middle of a project, a book project. Um, but I took the next day and I wrote like five or six gags that I thought were really funny and put them together. And um, and I bet we talked back and forth for almost a year. And it got to the point where I was like, cause he would, he would say things like, look, I can't make you any promises because Lucas, Lucasfilm ultimately has say over what we put in this magazine. Yeah. So I was like, okay. I said, regardless, I appreciate your time. And so I hadn't heard from him and this would, this would have been in January of 2017. I'll never forget it. Um, I said, Hey, Jonathan, hoping that maybe you at least heard back from them and they gave me some tips. Maybe there's some, maybe some, there's some things that I could change. Um, and he goes, Oh, <laughs> he said, Oh yeah. Um, we're good to go. I've, I've got the first three all lined up for April, May, and June. We need some more. And I'm like, what? <laughs> and I was just over the, I, I just can't even, I can't even tell you how, because I knew, I knew it was, it was God's kindness. Yeah. And, um, you know, when I was little, I loved Darth Vader. I scared me. Um, but I thought, man, this is such a cool, you know, he's larger than life on the screen. And so I've, ha I've been able to draw him several times, but I, I draw him with these big Google eyes, <laughs> which pays respect to Garfield. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> so it, it has truly been, um, uh, amazing. And, um, you know, I just, I just received like before, um, uh, before you and I talked, I, I got the, the latest issue, what? um, That's my awesome. subscriber issue. And, and I'm just like, every time I open it and I see my name, I just like, <laughs> I get shivers. And I, I'm like, thank you. You know, this is, this is really, really amazing. Um, and I hope that, you know, I'm going in April, April will be my fourth year. Awesome. So I'm hoping that there will be a collection, um, and if it, and if I have my way, it's going to be like those, um, like those old Garfield collections, yeah, you know, those, those long ones, yeah. Because yeah, when they, absolutely. when they put those books out, um, 
they were like, nobody does this size. Why right. are you doing the size? And Jim Davis was like, that's what I want. Right. So, <laughs> but those are the ones you remember, man. I oh remember, my gosh. you know, I remember being a kid in the library, you know, and getting those and you kind of had to hide them, you know, yeah. because you're supposed to be reading the science book or whatever. <laughs> and exactly. they always, they always stuck out like that much, you know, <laughs> and you're like, how can I read this and keep it hidden? You know, I can, I can just remember. I'm like, cause I even like, I would collect, I would cut out certain comics from the newspaper and put my own little books together because uh-huh. Jim Davis did this uh, strip called U.S. Acres. Okay. And um, it, it, it never got to be as popular as, as Garfield, but I always loved that strip. There was a cartoon of it back in the 80s. Um, but I can remember cutting them out <laughs> each and every week and put my own little book together. <laughs> so I said, That's well, awesome. if, if a light side collection doesn't come out, I'll, I'll probably – take all of them and put my own little book together. <laughs> you need to do that anyway. Uh, even if a, even if a collection does come out, I mean, that just, yeah. that's, a, that's a fun over Christmas geek project. That's what exactly. that is. <laughs> exactly. That's awesome. And, and that's great. I mean, you kind of, kind of hit inspire and inform all at once. But I'd love to camp out a little bit more on the, on the inform part where, you know, you took the initiative, right. To look at this magazine to realize, hey, there's not a comic. I'm going to pitch it, right? I'm going to, again, step out on faith. I'm going to be brave. I'm going to find this guy's contact information, write a nice email. So to talk a little bit about, I think, again, a, a big barrier for entry, I think, a lot of times for Christian creatives is that fear of rejection, right? And, oh, I can't reach out to so-and-so because if, right? right. Now, because if is, is a death knell. And, and today, in, in today's age, where it's not writing a, a physical letter and stick it in the mail, it's just a, a tweet, maybe, or a, a, a DM on Twitter, or maybe a Facebook. Talk a little bit about, give some words of encouragement for, for somebody who's out there, who's thinking about sending that email, or thinking about sending that tweet to that person that might be the one to unlock something for them. Give them, well, I, give them some advice. I think what, what has been really neat for me and that I can, I can cite several examples, um, is that right now I'm really, um, I'm able to do a number of jobs that really didn't exist. Okay. And what I mean by that right now, I do a weekly, I do a weekly comic strip called Hutch for business of furniture magazine. Now I have been with them for five years, but years before that, I did cartoons for um, an online magazine called the Monday morning quarterback, which was all about contract furnishings. <laughs> yeah, it was just, it, it that definitely, sounds uh, like a, a slap Jack, you know, laugh a minute <laughs> concept. So. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and how that came about, I sent, I, I sat down and I said, okay, if I'm going to do topical humor for this magazine, I'm going to, I'm going to draw up some samples and I'm going to send them to the editor. So uh, this would have been back in the, I guess, I guess early 2000s, early 2000, 2006, maybe. Um, I had just started sending comics and I said, would, would you don't have a comic strip? Would you like one? And um, he said, sure, I'll give it a try. So I think I did it for like six months um, free. Okay. And so after that six months was up, I said, man, I really appreciate the opportunity. Um, I've really enjoyed it. Um, but I don't think I can keep this up for free because I've got other stuff, you know, going on, but I was very respectful. I said, thank you so much. This has been really neat to reach such a big audience. Mm -hmm. And then what I was hoping was happen. Hey, I'll pay you. What are you, what are you looking for? Let's keep this going. Awesome. So, you know, I've had a number of, of opportunities like that where it's, it's, it's truly been a matter of reaching out saying, I think I have something unique. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that, you know, everyone, in my opinion, everyone loves comics. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you absolutely. either love comics or cartoons or e- even when I was in sales, I can remember I had this uh, catalog and I was showing a customer. And of course, I had drawn Scooby-Doo. And 
before then we hadn't talked very much, but you know, just very surfacey, like what, you know, what model this, and he goes, oh, I love Scooby-Doo. <laughs> and then he opened up about how he used to watch Scooby-Doo with his mom. And then we started talking. And so those relationships, um, you know, begin for, you know, people, I think it was, uh, um, maybe it's president elect Biden. He had a Hagar comic book, uh, comic strip in his office or something. Gotcha. And I'm like, everybody loves comics. <laughs> I don't care if it's Hagar or Beetle Bailey. You're gonna find somebody that loves Snuffy Smith right. or, <laughs> right. Right. or Garfield or, or Far Side or whatever. Far yeah. Side. Oh my gosh. Yeah. For me, it was Calvin and Hobbes. That was my Calvin that was my Hobbes. drug of choice when I was. Oh kid. yeah. <laughs> well, he he is just. Oh yeah. Bill Watterson. Watson. His. He's amazing. If you look at the stuff that he was doing when he was in college. Those comics were gorgeous, and right. it's like, I mean, it, it was obviously in his. Uh, right. It was in his DNA. DNA. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think I think what you're saying is right. You know, even our Lord said, "We have not because we ask not." Right, and and I think that that can be a dangerous trigger, though. Right, um, mm -hmm. and, and I'll expound on that. In that, there should be an addendum to that. You're right. Yeah, absolutely. I mean because if you abuse that, but you don't then fulfill, right? So if you, in your instance, if you would have gotten the job, the job and said, Hey, I want to do this comic and then done it for three weeks and then just kind of you disappear. That's no bueno. Right? right. So I think for the Christian creatives that are listening and watching, it's important to say, yes, yeah, step out on faith, send that message, ask that question. Right. But then if they say yes, if they bless you with an opportunity, don't let them down. Right. right. Deliver deliver the best offering to that customer, that potential customer right? And, and, and our King that you can, you know, and then I think that will lead to future blessings. Right. I think that's. Yeah. And I think that's important um, because I, I really did. Um, I was intentional about, I'm going to show them what I can do. Right. I'm going to show them that, that, I'm funny. I'm going to show them that I can, that I can draw. Yeah. I'm going to give them my first fruits, right? I'm not going to give them a second offering, right? Are you there? Hello. Hello. Jamie. Just hang on. If you can hear me, I think we've lost our connection. There we go. You there? Oh, okay. All right. We can edit that part out. So no. Problem. Okay. Hold on one second. Okay. All right. So yeah, go ahead. I think we're back. Okay. <laughs> well, I was just saying that, um, you know, I was, I was very intentional about showing them I'm serious. Mm -hmm. I, I want this to be my job. It's not a job now. It wasn't even in your mind, mm -hmm. but now can you imagine not having it? Right. Right. And in my, and in my case, they were like, no, I want this. I want this to continue. So I was with that one magazine for many, many years. And then some people left that company to start a new one and they brought me with them. Oh, okay. Gotcha. And that's just, you know, they're like, you, you're always funny. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, 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 and, and we want to do that. We want you to come up with your own character for us. Cool. Um, so it's just been really neat. Um, and for a while there, I was reaching out to, like I would just call up random companies and, um, and say, Hey, do you need a, uh, do you need a, a, um, a comic character to, to kind of mascot help advertise? or whatever. Yeah. A mascot. Thank you. Yeah. I couldn't think of that word. <laughs> so like I, I did work for like security companies or right. in, you know, eventually I stopped doing that because my other work kept, kept growing, right. but it was really fun, uh, to reach out to people. Um, and cold call is like, you've been cold calling your whole life. Right. Why in sales. You, in sales. Why don't you, why don't you sell yourself? Right. And right. So I'm That's... like, I'm, you know, I'm a cartoonist. Here's, <laughs> here's some of my work. Would you, would you like something like this? And, um, and even if people aren't interested, usually you'll talk to them for a while. They're like, oh man, I wish, I wish we could do this because I love Garfield or right. I love Snoopy. Um, so, so call my brother-in-law, he's got a roofing company and they need a mascot or whatever. Exactly. 
Yeah. So I think being, you know, being a Christian witness, you know, and being loving, I think that's part of, part of the formula here as well that you're talking about. And I think, I think, you know, and offering your first fruits, right. That was the whole problem with Cain and Abel, right. You know, Cain didn't bring his first fruits. He brought the second offering, right. And God wasn't pleased. And I think for us as Christian creatives, we've got to always bring that first fruit, right. We got to bring our best, whether we're getting paid or not, whether it's a, you know, whether it's we're shooting it for a job or a pitch for a job, or it's the, oh, I don't know, 3000th comic we've done for Star Wars Insider, you know, something like that. Right. So we always have to bring that a game because ultimately we're glorifying God, you know. With well, our the gift. thing that I always thought was so cool was that I didn't name the comic strip. Um, I, I had something, I, it was bad. <laughs> it was like, ew, that's not a very good name. Right. But, but the, the editor, Jonathan, he was like, I want to call it the light side. And I was awesome. just like, <laughs> I see, I see what you're doing there. <laughs> I know where that came from. <laughs> Cause he was always a fan of, of the far side. And yeah. he was like, you know, in star Wars, you have the light side and the dark side. And I was uh-huh. just like, man, that is so cool. Yeah. Um, so it's neat. It's neat to be able to, to see and, and to say, you know, thank you. Thank you, Lord, for for everything amen amen that's awesome <laughs> the light side that should be the title of the podcast the light yeah. side <laughs> all right so we're going to step into the educate uh section of the podcast and this is where we like to if we have any tips or tricks uh you know insider knowledge any special pens or pencils or you know digital tools or any shortcuts things like that we'd love right. to to hear about some of that stuff that Jamie's learned over the entire course of his career, maybe some stuff that you've learned and still use or some stuff you learned and have uh, thrown in the, in the, in the round bin. Um, so what are some tips and tricks on the educate side? Well, I owe most of my career to, um, to a guy named Eric Merced. Um, Eric uh, was a good friend of mine for many years. Uh, he, sadly, he recently passed away. Um, He was only 45 Um, and he was the salt. (laughs) He spent uh, two full days um, on the phone with me, teaching me how to use Photoshop. Um, I had no idea what I was doing. I I didn't know what a lasso tool was. I didn't know what, uh, (laughs) What I didn't know how to do (laughs) I didn't know a layer. I mean, he was so kind to me over the years and, um, and I, I, sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. Uh, we're, we're real here. So yeah, and, yeah, be real, man. I really want to, um, I want to pay it forward the way he did to me. Um, cause I really, I wouldn't have been able to do any of this without him. He built my, he built my website. Wow. He, um, he taught me how to prep a book for printing, um, he told me what to look for when, when contracts come over. Um, he told me, he always told me, you're not charging enough. <laughs> um, he, was, he was an amazing artist and, and so kind to me. And um, most of my education came from him. Um, I, I'll never be able to, uh, to repay. Um, and, uh, you know, I'd, I'd always there's a part of me that always felt so guilty because, because of the opportunities that I've, that I've been given. And, um, you know, I think he should have, I mean, he, he was a better artist than, than I am. And I think he should have gotten everything he, he wanted. Um, but I am so grateful to him. And what it, what that taught me was to, uh, pass that along, uh, to other people. Um, so, you know, as, as far as, um, as far as tools of the trade, I love the Pentel pocket brush pen. Okay. Uh, you can refill those. Um, and it gives you a nice crisp, clean line that looks like a coloring book, which is, which is strange because when I started out, I was, I had a very punk rock aesthetic. I used Sharpie markers and everything was bleeding. And I, I can remember, um, one of my, uh, cartooning heroes, told me once he said you've got solid character designs but they're choking on these <laughs> sharpie lines he's like you need to learn a brush and i was so hard-headed but when i finally picked it up i'm like oh my gosh they were right this is just so so clean it's so seamless um 
but you know, some of those things you just, you, you got to learn through being hard hit. Yep. Absolutely. Um, uh, so that's one thing I use. Um, I still draw uh, traditional okay. with pen and ink, but then of course I do everything layered colors, prepping for printing everything in, in Photoshop. Gotcha. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I just, you know, I love it. I can't imagine not having the original artwork. I love just yeah. holding it and looking at it. Yeah. But many people are just going to all digital. It's all digital. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I mean, I guess maybe one day I'll make that that leap. But for right now, I like being able to like sell the original Star yeah. Wars strips. And so, um, so you don't, you, do you sell all of them or do you keep some of them and like have a room in your house where it's wallpapered with original? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I don't. I, I do have um, on the wall in my studio, I do have the um, certificate that says um that i'm in the national cartoonist society oh sweet uh because that was for me that was a big deal uh john rose who draws um barney google and george broderick jr um who's done a number of comic books and children's books they they got me into it they wrote me the letter saying yeah this you know this is this is jamie we've known him and uh but getting that because you know you've got I mean, the, the history of, of that organization with oh, yeah. you know, Charles yeah. Schultz. And yeah, <laughs> so that that I put on the wall, um, uh, I've sold, I think, four of the comic strips. Um, and it's really neat because, you know, they're they're not they're not inexpensive. Mm-hmm. Um, but when people buy them, I know they they're going to take care of them. Right. Um, right. So I've sold uh, um, the first the first two that I ever did, those are gone. And then the one with baby Yoda, that one went pretty fast. <laughs> <laughs> so if you, uh, if, if you had found one tool, so it sounds like you're primarily working physical pen and ink, scan it in and everything else is Photoshop. Is that correct? Mm-hmm. Is that your process? Yep. All right. Mm-hmm. So if you could, if you could give a Christian creative out there, Photoshop, which I'm one of them, uh, one tip that saved you countless hours what would that one tip be oh man <laughs> man uh, i i don't know i i need those <laughs> because coloring is not something i'm i'm working on a, a picture book now and coloring is i don't i don't know the shortcuts yet i mean you can i can draw really really fast right um, but coming in and coloring it, you know, usually takes <laughs> quite a few hours, right, uh, right. especially when you're wanting to tweak it and make sure that everything is just right, because oh, yeah. you will naturally develop your style. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it's just going to happen. Um, and then no matter what you draw, you're, you're going to be like, well, that still looks like it was drawn by me. <laughs> right, right. Exactly. Even, uh, you know, you may want to draw like this guy or this gal, but it's not going to wind up looking like, like yours. Um, so, you know, as far as, uh, as far as Photoshop, I think when I was first starting, the lasso tool was a huge help for me because um, everything wasn't flat. You know, you could do those, those shadings and, and, and learning how to do that really, I think, took my work to to another level um you know it's still very simple and a lot of that is intentional Mm -hmm. um deceptively simple right right you know it's like charlie brown looks easy until you go to draw him yeah like oh my gosh (laughs) (laughs) you look at yours and you're like that doesn't look like charlie brown at all (laughs) it was like a football with legs exactly (laughs) how did charles schultz do it you know um (laughs) He drew 8 million of them. That's how he did it. <laughs> exactly. You're exactly right. And, and I think if, if, that, if that was going to be, you know, a tip for a creative, it's, it's to find, find a way to draw every single day. Mm-hmm. Um, now, obviously, don't make yourself, you know, sick over it or, right. you know, if you miss a day. But if you, if you do something every single day, and it's like I tell kids when I go to schools, if you want to do an instrument, but you only practice, you know, once a month, you're really not going to be that good. Right. You've <laughs> got to practice. You've got to be passionate about it. Now, can you, can you teach passion? 
I don't know. I mean, with me, it was like, I'm doing this. Mm -hmm. I don't care what anybody says. (laughs) I am going to do this. And I get, I get excited whether I see my name in star Wars or in a church bulletin for something that I've drawn. If I put my heart and soul in it and I get to share it, that's everything. Yeah. Yeah. That is everything. Yeah. Anytime you're willing to eat beanie weenies and ramen noodles to do something, (laughs) you're passionate. (laughs) Amen. Yep. Yeah, I was uh, tweeting yesterday. I was, uh, I actually was blessed yesterday and had a day to write some scripts. And so I was kind of tweeting, you know, like one of three scripts down, two or three scripts down, you know, and finally three or three scripts down. I got three done yesterday. And a buddy of mine sends me a message. How do you do it so fast? I said, I don't know. I said, I've been doing it for almost three decades. Right. You would think you would, uh, you know, you'd get fast. So Exactly. For me, I think uh, one of the level the level changers for or the I was able to level up in Photoshop is when I learned to to group and name all of my layers. That that changed my life. Oh. <laughs> there you go. A lot of artists don't do that. They don't name their layers, and I have no idea how they keep up. So, oh, if you saw mine, you'd be like, I don't know how you <laughs> you don't Steven, name. Your I was layers. talking to I was talking to Stephen. No, and sometimes I'll I'll get to a point and I'm like. I'm going to flatten it and I'm going to start over. <laughs> he It'll was like, be easier. <laughs> like, what are you doing? I was like, I don't know. I, I don't know. But at the end, it looks like how I want it to look. <laughs> I think, I think my next level up is going to be when I learn how to do masking. To me, I cannot understand masking. It makes no sense, no sense at all. So that's my next, that's my next level up job. Yeah. I need that too. <laughs> I don't know what that is. <laughs> Maybe we'll learn it together. <laughs> that would, that would be good. You know, I, I'm definitely, uh, one thing that I've, I've been trying to do is uh, um, uh, portraits and, mm-hmm. and celebrity portraits. And um, it's, it's really interesting to, to see uh, the techniques that people have. And ultimately, that's what it boils down to, the technique. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's, it, it looks like magic. Mm -hmm. um after you've done it over and over and over again and for me if i can draw something and somebody goes okay well that's um you know that's keanu reeves or that's right you know rachel mcadams or whoever um then then that's then that's uh pretty good and i'm I'm still just trying to learn like the, the different shading and and you know if you've seen some people do uh, real life portrait sometimes they'll do a layer of light green mm-hmm. you know because some of us we have an olive pigment yeah and i'm like you look at it like what are you doing are you drawing the hulk <laughs> and then and they go like, back over it and just it's like wait <laughs> oh my gosh how did you do that you know or they'll start with like a really pink layer you know right and they'll come back over it with the with the highlights yeah oh or gosh doing that undertone yeah so cool the, yeah the undertones pink. And caricature, I think that's a whole nother world, right? I mean, that's a that's a whole. I mean, it's just like, how does your brain work? It's just amazing. Right. <laughs> exactly. Well, speaking of uh, so, speaking of how do you work? So, I'm kind of coming to the end of the uh, end of the program now. What I've been waiting for. So yeah. <laughs> I want you to tell us a little bit about your secret, uh, your new project. It's not a secret project because it's out there. But before yes. you tell us about that, okay, I want I want you to answer this question: Is this the first original? wholly own property for you or, or have there been more before this guy is right. this your first yes there have there have been more um one of my most uh popular properties and of course this is you know um we're not talking large amounts of money but as far as what <laughs> what people gravitate towards right um the first the first time i wrote and illustrated my own picture book it was uh, Zucchini the Snowman. Okay. <laughs> and uh, I, I wanted to write a story for my daughter. And it's, a, it's about a little girl that uh, she saves a snowball in her freezer. And in the spring, she uh, sneaks it into her dad's garden. Okay. And it becomes, and it's a magic garden. And mm-hmm. so you've got Zucchini and then that, there were other characters and it, it all boiled down to, I wanted to do a snowman book, but I didn't want it, my snowman to have a carrot nose. Okay. That's all it, that's how it started. So he had a zucchini nose, a zucchini nose. <laughs> so I have done zucchini. I've done marinara, which is a tomato nose. Uh, 
the third one was pumpkin. And then the fourth one that's coming out is called Paul B. Onion. Um, and uh, so we have a series of these. Paul B. Onion. That's awesome. Paul B. Onion. That one is, that one is going to be Not Paul great. Bunyan, Paul B. Onion. <laughs> and uh, so, um, yeah, Zucchini, I went to my first show. And it was the first time I had a property that I just sat out on the table. And people came up and they bought. I, oh, that wow. had never happened to me before. Usually I would have to say, okay, well, this is the story of so-and-so. I literally had people stopping by the table going, this is cute. How much? Wow. And That's so I was awesome. like, Ooh, okay. So this, you know, <laughs> zucchini I have sold. Um, and it, obviously this is a modest number, but in going to schools, you know, before COVID mm -hmm. um, I've probably sold, you know, 300 copies wow. of, of zucchini. That's awesome. Um, and then I would sell, you know, they, they'd get marinara. And so around yeah. here in Mechanicsville, the kids that were growing up with my daughter, Ava, they all know zucchini. <laughs> They're like, that's zucchini, the snowman. <laughs> um, and I've even had, uh, there've been a two or three times where I've had to contact uh, Amazon because somebody had taken my knocked, drawings off. and they had been selling like mugs and t-shirts. Oh, wow. And I'm like, this is mine. <laughs> <laughs> and then they helped me, you know, they were like, yeah. okay, well, we'll, we'll take it down. Um, so, and that's frustrating. But it's also very encouraging because it's yeah, like, oh, well, this yeah. must be it's good, something good worth, to have. worth right. stealing. <laughs> um, so yeah, Z Zucchini, uh, before Zucchini, there was a character I did called Cody the Cavalier. Okay. And that cool. was something, again, that was for my kids. My son would come home from school every day and he'd say, what did you, what did you draw today? <laughs> um, that was a little, like a little gag cartoon and, and Tyler and Ava were both in it because okay. the premise was um, the King hired Cody to protect them, but he felt like a babysitter. <laughs> um, so he was always trying to go out and slay dragons, but he had to help them with their homework and all that kind of stuff. Well, does Cody make an appearance in your new comic? Because it sounds like he would fit. Cody will will be making an appearance. Yes. Oh, cool! Awesome. Yep. So, so tell us tell us about your new property. I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> my new property. Uh, my son Tyler and I we wrote and created a book called Blue Scar: The Barbarian. Uh, and Blue Scar is is obviously a nod to. Uh, a Black Star, which was the precursor to He-Man. Right, right. And also Thundar the Barbarian. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of hidden Easter eggs. If you grew up loving filmation um, and you know about the creators and some of the voice actors, then, then you're, gonna, you're really going to enjoy it. Um, so over the summer, re we released the first issue and we, we only printed like 75. Mm -hmm. And I think I have 10 left. So awesome. we've, we've sold 65 copies. Earmark one for me. I'm going to get it okay. out of this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we started doing the second issue. Uh, we're about 13 weeks into the second issue. We started doing that on our Patreon page. So it's patreon.com backslash Jamie Cosley. Okay. Uh, for, for a dollar, I think it's a dollar a month, um, you'll get four comics in your, in your email. Mm -hmm. Um. And this issue was a, or the story arc, excuse me, Blue Scar fought a, a barbarian called Jeremiah Thundermuffin. Um, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> that one was a lot of fun because that, um, that was a nod to Thundercats. Uh, Jeremiah Thundermuffin, he has this, he's a lion and he's got, yeah. this, he's got this giant mane. Yeah. And when he says, <laughs> when he says Thunder Muffin, these little lions pop out of his mane <laughs> <laughs> and they start fighting. Um, so it's, it's really, it's really silly, but it is definitely fun. My son has created this whole storyline. Awesome. About how everybody's related. And then now Steven, my brother, he's creating the backgrounds, the sets. Uh-huh. So he had to he had to say, okay, what does Hamatross look like, and <laughs> and um, who are some of the people that live there? And so now we're we're building this world, mm -hmm. um, and we've just added another person, Levi Krauss, who is a uh, uh, 
brilliant cartoonist. I've known him for years. And he just said, hey, I want in on this. <laughs> I said, you do? He goes, yeah, I love it. I'm like, cool, come on. So he's written a four-page story that I'll be presenting next week for the first time um, while I work on Solomon Bounce. Uh, Solomon Bounce is a, a rabbit, uh, kind of like a Han Solo type character. Cool. cool. Uh, and um, yeah, we're just, we are just having a blast. So I think in total I've done... Um, you know, maybe 40 pages so far, awesome. uh, sequential pages. And, uh, I am just having a blast. Well, and Hey, uh, Hey, I, I would, I would love to write, uh, an issue of blue scar. So oh, absolutely. <laughs> so, <laughs> we, yes, can, we, oh, we can oh, talk about, and, yes. and blue scar is on your shirt. Isn't that blue scar? You're wearing yep. blue scar. Aren't you? <laughs> Look at that. Yep. That's awesome. Blue he scar looks like there's a little bit of Bobby as well from the Dungeons and Dragons cartoon, you know, with the horn helm. Yep. You remember well, they, Bobby? Right. Yep, I remember. I remember. I loved that cartoon. I kind of, um, uh, again, uh, comic strips and comic books. They both kind of, <laughs> they blend. But Black Star and He Man grew the Wanderer by Sergio Aragonés, the greatest living cartoonist there is. Right, right. And Dennis the Menace. If you take all those properties, <laughs> this is what it looks like. <laughs> I love it. Um, so I, um, you know, grew the wanderer growing up. That was my favorite. Comic. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, and he had such silly things like, you know, he would do anything for cheese dip and <laughs> <laughs> who won't, who wouldn't, I mean, yeah, seriously. Who wouldn't? <laughs> he had this dog that, you know, when he first met him, he was going to eat the dogs. He was hungry, but then they became best friends. And I was just like, you know, I told Tyler, I said, I want to write something that's going to be funny, but it's going to have some depth to it. Yeah. Um, and that's where he comes in. He's got a real talent for structuring a story. And he, he does a really good job of keeping me on task because um, <laughs> I'll do something. And he's like, what, what are you doing? We didn't even talk about this. <laughs> and I'm like, you know, cause when he saw the little, the little lions popping out of the main, he's like, what is wrong with you? I'm like, I just thought it was funny for him to go thunder muffin, thunder muffin. <laughs> It is. It is. It's funny. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's really silly. Um, uh, we've got quite a few patrons so far. Awesome. Uh, Praise of course God. We want to we keep building on that. If you, if you join at the dollar, um, you get, of course, you get a comic every week. Mm -hmm. If you do $5 a month, it's the comic. Plus I'll do a sketch card oh. uh, of whatever you want. Nice. Um, I, for a pay for a patron, this, Last month I did a, um, a Snoopy as Darth Vader. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it doesn't have to be, you know, my right. characters, but, uh, but yeah, we're having, we're having a blast. And, and the goal is to, um, um, to pitch it as a show. Uh, so we, I happen to know an animator, yeah, <laughs> an animation <laughs> company, <laughs> but that's another hat that I wear. So. <laughs> yeah, we, we will see what happens. We, we awesome. are, we are having a blast and, and right now there's four of us, but I can see it expanding. And I think people are going to love what Levi does. Uh, Levi is just such a good cartoonist. And I was blown away when he said, he said, I've got my own characters. I don't know why I'm wanting to draw yours, but I do. I'm like, <laughs> I'll take it, buddy. Let's work together, man. That is awesome. That's awesome. Well, Jamie, <laughs> tell everybody where they can find you. We've mentioned the Patreon. I know one time we'll go ahead and Tell everybody again, and I think you have a Twitter account as well and a website too. So let everybody yeah. know where they can find you. Yep, on Twitter, I'm. Uh, it's it's at Jamie Cosley. That's J A M I E C O S L E Y, and it says Jedi cartoonist. <laughs> um, Patreon is patreon.com backslash Jamie Cosley, and then my website is jamiecosley.com. And um, yeah, it's it's real easy to get a hold of me. Um, I'm, I'm very quick to get back, especially if you're, if you're asking uh, to pay me for artwork. <laughs> um, <laughs> so lead with that, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, but yeah, I really appreciate you having me on. I'm excited Absolutely. about, uh, I'm excited about everything that you're doing. And, <laughs> and, uh, and I just think it's neat how uh, you know, Stephen kind of introduced us. Yes, and, absolutely. Well, I think it'll be a long and hopefully fruitful relationship and, uh, and nothing else 
brothers in Christ. So, you know, that, 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 that's Trump's for all of it. So we're going to be hanging out laughing in eternity and drawing comics and stuff like that. So that's going to that's be awesome. Cool. <laughs> See, when, I'm really excited because when I get to heaven, I'll actually be able to draw because I'll have a perfect body. Yeah. <laughs> right now I just can't draw. I'm not very good at it, but <laughs> That's All right. right. Well, speaking of heaven, I'm going to pray us out. We always like to close with prayer uh, on uh, Creatively Christian. And so I'd love to pray us out and then um, and we'll be done. But I'd uh, love to have you back on the podcast anytime. And uh, as as things progress with Blue Scar and other properties that you're developing. Uh, so thanks again for coming on. Thank you. All right. Let's pray. Our King of heaven, we just come before you, uh, praising your name, Father, thanking you so much for this this afternoon and hanging out with Jamie, my brother, and laughing and learning. Uh, I just pray your blessings upon him and his family, Father, uh, upon his business. I praise you, Father, that he and his wife, are, uh, they've come through this COVID thing and um, the infection and they're feeling better. I just thank you so much for, for healing their bodies, Father. I pray your blessings on everything that he touches and everything that he does. I thank you for his servant's heart. I uh, thank you for his willingness to serve and his just his gentle spirit, Father. It's just so, so humbling and just so amazing. I thank you for his talents and how even in the midst of uh, the largest secular, you know, uh, properties on the planet, he's there being a witness. He's there loving people and shining a light for you. And I just thank you and praise you for that. I pray that um, um, if it's your will, Father, you continue to prosper him and grow him in those avenues and that uh, as he comes up with new uh, comedic and amazing ideas I just pray that you foster those as well and continue to grow those thank you for this technology that allows us to talk um, and thank you for everyone who's listening father everyone who's watching um, and we thank you for this season that we're in currently um, and we praise you for your son who came um, as a little baby um, to live a sinless life to die on a cross uh, for our our sins and he would have done it if it was just me. So I praise you for that, Father. I thank you so much. And it's in Jesus' beautiful and um, mighty and unmatched name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, my brother. Thank you thank so you. much for being thank on the you. show. And we'll talk to you soon. Sounds good. Thanks, man. All right. All right. Bye-bye. Creatively Christian is a product of Theophany Media. You can find out more at theophanymedia.com. This show is hosted by Brandon Hollingsworth, Andrea Sandifer, Bill Brooks, and Lynn Baber. Our logo is by Bill Brooks. Our music is by Bill Brooks and Andrea Sandifer. To join our paid membership, the Creatively Christian Club, which includes exclusive content, networking events, and masterminds with expert creatives, just go to club.theophanymedia.com. Have a blessed day, and keep on creating for our Lord.